Hey guys, I want to answer the question, what is insulin? Now I've done a lot of videos on insulin resistance, ketosis, I talked about sugar, but I think I forgot to do a video on actual what is insulin. Whoops, better late than never, but let's talk about what it is. Um, insulin is a hormone made by the pancreas. So the pancreas is a gland underneath the left rib cage and insulin is a hormone. So hormones are communication particles that are made by glands that travel through the blood. Okay, so the purpose, the main purpose of insulin is to lower blood sugar. Okay, so insulin lowers the sugar in the blood. Now, normally you have about a teaspoon, just a small amount of sugar in all of your blood. So an average person roughly has about a gallon and a half of blood. Okay, that's only one teaspoon diluted in a gallon and a half of blood. So anything more than that would be excessive and your body would have to get it out of the blood and it uses insulin to do that. Okay, so the average person consumes 31 teaspoons of sugar every single day. So you can see that's a big problem. Um, and what I mean by normal sugars, I'm talking about like 100 milligrams per deciliter. That's one teaspoon per one and a half gallons of blood. So anything more, your body uh, activates insulin to get it out of the blood. So. So it allows cells to absorb glucose. You can think of um, insulin like a key that unlocks the cell, opens a door to allow glucose to go into the cell, to feed the cell. Okay, so that's what it does. Now, it also stores sugar in the liver and the muscles, and that's called glycogen, which is a, like a string of uh, sugar molecules, string of glucose. Um, that's called glycogen. So you have that stored sugar to be released if you need it for quick energy. Um, okay, so it stores sugar and then anything extra, it converts to fat. So it's a fat making hormone, especially the visceral fat in the gut. It also helps you absorb amino acids. That's protein. Wow, that's interesting, isn't it? It also absorbs potassium. So this is a real key mineral involved in so many functions, insulin is necessary to help you absorb potassium. It blocks fat burning. In the presence of just a little bit of insulin, you are not going to burn fat, okay? It retains sodium. That's why after a sugar meal, you could gain like a pound of fluid and you feel like you gain more weight. Okay, so basically, stores sugar, stores fat, reduces blood sugars. Got that so far? Now, what happens in the body is um, you become a diabetic or a pre-diabetic. Uh, that's called insulin resistance. So when insulin becomes dysfunctional, it starts to be resisted in the cell. So now the key doesn't work. So if we were to block that entry, it's called insulin resistance, okay? So now we're gonna actually have less insulin in the cell and less glucose in the cell. Now what's gonna happen, signals are gonna go back to the pancreas and tell the pancreas to release more insulin. So with insulin resistance, you have high levels of insulin, but it's not working. That's why you have all the damage, okay? If insulin is blocked, guess what's gonna to happen to the blood sugars? It's gonna go higher and higher and higher, and that's diabetes. So high sugar is diabetes, hyperglycemia. Uh, so you have a situation where you have out of control blood sugars, yet your cells are starving of insulin and glucose inside the cell. That's why you crave sweets, okay? And a lot of other damage. Insulin resistance will cause a lot more conversion of fat into your gut, into the other cells of the body. It will also starve the cells of glucose in the brain. That's why you're gonna lose your memory. You're gonna have all sorts of problems with that. You won't be able to absorb the amino acids. That's why a diabetic, they lose their muscle strength and muscle mass. They won't be able to absorb potassium. So guess what? Their blood pressure goes up. Their energy goes down. Their sodium goes up because it retains more sodium. Uh, and they're not able to lose weight because they have too much insulin and that's blocking any chance of burning fat, okay? All right, so you know what insulin does now. It's very, very, very important, isn't it? But it's, the problem is if you have too much of it, that's where the, there's a problem because it, it, it blocks the absorption. So your body just likes a certain amount. What controls the level of insulin um, is the sugar in the blood. 
So whatever's in the blood. So let's talk about what stimulates insulin. Sugar and anything that converts to sugar. Refined carbohydrates, breads, pasta, cereal, crackers, alcohol, things like that. If you combine sugar with protein, you'll exaggerate the spike of insulin even more. So it's a compound effect. Excessive protein will also stimulate insulin. So I like to recommend between three to six ounces of protein per meal. Um, MSG, monosodium glutamate, and as modified food starch, that's in a lot of junk foods. That will increase insulin by 300%. Okay, eating in general stimulates insulin. So let me just show you one thing on that. Here's my favorite book, Guidance Physiology. And I want to just show you this one little point. It says, other factors that stimulate insulin secretion. Gastrointestinal hormones. Okay, what does that mean, gastrointestinal hormones? It means every time you eat anything, you stimulate insulin. And this is why intermittent fasting is so powerful because you're cutting down the times that you eat, the frequency of eating, and you're dropping insulin, and you're actually correcting the dysfunction, okay? So it actually just goes beyond just cutting out your carbs. Cortisol will increase insulin, that's the stress. So stress converts your muscle protein into amino acids, which is then converted into glucose. So it basically changes your proteins into sugar, and then it exhausts the cells of the pancreas, and then you get, become a diabetic. Other than that, you're perfectly fine. And then we have nicotine in excessive amounts will also increase insulin. And then you have caffeine that in a large amounts, if you drink coffee all day long, it will affect the adrenals and increase cortisol. But if you're just doing like one in the morning, you're gonna be fine. But excessive amounts of caffeine will stimulate uh, insulin. Now, the things that inhibit insulin, turn it off, would be cutting out the sugar and the refined carbs. Uh, fasting, intermittent fasting, will greatly help uh, fix insulin resistance. Consuming fat has kind of a neutral effect on insulin. Uh, apple cider vinegar improves insulin sensitivity. Potassium in foods and as a supplement will increase insulin and so will chromium, okay? So I just want to give you an overview of exactly what insulin is. Now you have a foundation to understand even more the other factors. Thanks for watching. Hi guys, listen, I created an evaluation quiz. It is quite long, it's 104 questions, but it's very thorough. Click the link below and take it and it will help you to find out what's really behind all your symptoms. So if you're enjoying this content, go ahead and share it with someone that could really benefit from it.